today we're changing it up a bit, doing a little kayaking, kind of get out and uh, just kind of enjoy the, the beautiful weather today. It's still a little windy for the uh, for the reef, so I thought maybe uh, maybe another day or two and uh, we'll be able to get out on the reef. But kayaking's always a great option. Uh, kind of get out, do a little fishing, see some stuff uh, that you normally don't see off the reef. Uh, so just a really good day. Hope you enjoy the footage. Uh, probably do a little uh, cooking up of some lobster this evening. And uh, yeah, I'm really glad you uh, followed along and um, thanks a lot for following us.
Thanks a lot for following. I really enjoyed doing this video today, and uh, we'll see you soon. Unfortunately, I'm here on my own. Elizabeth is on the road. Um, I think she's in South Carolina this week. So I'll be doing this solo, but um, I think uh, you really, really like the recipe. It's not really that difficult, and it's absolutely fantastic. All right, so for the most part, here's our ingredients. I'm going to take you through it step by step. Got some really, really fresh parsley. We've got a couple of bay leaves. The uh, body of bay leaves, any bay leaves will do. But I like them because I use a lot of tomato sauce, a lot of spaghetti sauces, and they're great in uh, all sorts of um, stews, anything, just about any kind of sauce you would make. Some nice organic olive oil. Cayenne pepper for the heat. Um, I like to use this uh, Tutoroso crushed tomatoes, but you can use any kind of crushed tomatoes. This one happens to have basil in it as well, but you want them crushed because you want that sauce to be nice and thick. I also use some Campari tomatoes. These are the best tomatoes I can find down here in Key Largo. Publix sells them. Uh, for those of you that don't know what Publix is, Publix is our supermarket, um, and these are really, really good tomatoes. And then because I'm trying to be good and... Uh, stay off the heavy carbs i've got something called pasta zero that elizabeth turned me on to she's going to be real real happy that i did this instead of uh, regular pasta but you can use any kind of pasta of course this is just pasta zero it's got uh, very very low carbs um and it's it's actually pretty good so i'll show you how it all works with this as well uh, fresh grated parmesan cheese my personal favorite lots of garlic personal taste and then of course the star of the show will be the lobster tail and I even have the knuckles and I'll show you how we break them up kind of crack them and get them into the sauce and then um, oh yeah the second star of the show my Frontera Merlot which will you some of this will go into the sauce but most of it will go into me not all of it tonight but some of it so Favorite kind of red wine. I don't know why I really like this Frontera. Not very expensive, but um, but really good quality wine. So Chilean wine, my favorite. So there it is. Everything all together. That's how it's going to start off. And uh, in a couple of minutes, we'll put it all together. And then we'll get started cooking it. Got some of the stuff prepped. Uh, I didn't want to put you through the whole prep process, but I'm going to show you exactly what I did and take you step by step through the process. Lobster Fry Diablo is just an awesome, awesome dish. You gotta like spicy. You can make it really, really hot, or you can just kind of tone it down. But you can leave out the heat entirely and then just make like a real nice seafood sauce. But that spice is what really makes it really happen. So, all right, let's go over here and get this thing rolling. All right, first thing we're gonna do is turn this thing on to uh, pretty much high. I've got kind of a deep pan because uh, we're gonna put a lot of stuff in there. Uh, and a lot of times we put a lot of seafood in there as well. So that thing's going to be full of lobster and uh, some nice, real great spaghetti sauce. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, pour some olive oil in there and get it heated up. Kind of a generous portion. Love good organic olive oil. There we go. That should do it. Let's roll it around a little bit. Check it out. Yeah, a little bit more. You should do that with wine too. Eh, just a little bit more. Speaking of wine, we're going to probably put a splash of Merlot in there this evening. Not a fan of the screw top, by the way, just so you know. Although these wines are going in that direction. But I much prefer to pop a cork. Just a personal choice. Some garlic, as you can see, love garlic. Generous portion of garlic. Gonna save a little for later. Show you what we'll do with that. There we go. Hmm. Ah, I love that smell. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so always use wood. Don't want plastic in here. Don't really don't want metal in here either. Just kind of toss it around a little bit till it gets just, just brown, but not burnt. Real important, not burnt. And as soon as it gets kind of close, the next thing that we're going to put in is these chopped tomatoes. Now remember, I showed you these before. They're called Campari, but get the best tomatoes that you can. These are the best that I can find. Real flavorful. Cut up like three of these. They're like the size of a golf ball. So most of the time they're like medium. All right, the garlic is getting kind of browned up. So we're going to put this in there now. Cover that just a little bit so we don't get all splattered. Turn the heat down just a touch. We want to kind of cook these up just so they kind of get wilted and soft. Oh yeah, one other thing I forgot to tell you about. I also like to have these. They're called brazi bites. And just put them in the oven uh, while we're cooking. And they come out nice and brown. Dip them in the sauce. Pretty awesome. So we're going to pop some of those in there right now. They kind of look like this. Just little round brazi bites. Kind of another little personal favorite. All right, these are, tomatoes are starting to come along. I'd say we probably had this like on medium high. I'm gonna throw a little bit of uh, this chopped parsley. So the parsley is just kind of, just kind of a, kind of a call on your own. The sauce needs parsley, and I tend to over parsley, but you can cut it just kind of coarse. There's a lot of flavor to the sauce, a lot of flavor to the sauce, especially the seafood sauces. When we cook with meat, then we usually put um, basil and parsley. But seafood, just parsley. All right, this is looking really good. All right, so the next step is turn down the heat a lot of it because we don't want this splashing on us and getting a burn. So the next thing that's going in is the crushed tomatoes. There we go. Yeah, we did that without getting burned up. A couple of bay leaves. Yeah, I put like three, four, oops, five. Again, nothing but flavor. Gives all the flavor in the world. Makes a big difference, these bay leaves. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we forgot one very important ingredient. A little splash of the vino. I'll tell you about a quarter to a half a cup. Again, that's the taste, but what it does is it gives it a real richness to the sauce. And of course, need a little richness for the cook. Yeah, and that's why you got to keep stirring it, otherwise it will pop at you. Okay, so we're going to let this simmer now for about, I'd say probably about 10 to 15 minutes. Just to kind of like cook it down. And let those flavors all meld together. All right, so it's been cooking probably about 15, maybe a little bit longer than that. You can see it's thickening up very nicely. So now it's just all about the flavor at this point. So, one other uh, ingredient that I like to put in um, that I really think does add to uh, the whole dish is a few of these Lindsay capers. 
And I think what they do is they add just a little bit of vinegar to it, just a little bit of flavor. So I throw, I don't know, throw a few in there. Again, personal taste, just whatever you like. Oop, there goes the cayenne pepper. I also put in a little bit more parsley towards the end. Give it another stir or two. Take a look over here now. The next thing we're going to do is pop in this lobster. So what I did was is I cut the lobster all into pieces and leaving the shell on. Leaving the shell on is really important because it gives us nothing but flavor. And then I even used the, um, the horns, the antennas. Uh, just the uh, right near the body, not the skinny part, of course, but and they've got lots of meat in them and they also add a lot of flavor to the sauce as well. So, yeah, don't throw these out. Um, <laughs> we did our, uh, our lobster mini season and sure enough, one of you pointed out, hey, why did you throw away the horns? And the answer was, is I just forgot. I was so excited about catching all the lobster. But normally we do take these. We'll boil them, uh, put them on a grill. Um, last year we made lobster bisque out of a whole bunch of them. So yeah, don't ever throw these out if you come down here and catch these. These are great, got lots of meat in them. And like I say, in the sauce, it's just gonna be absolutely awesome. So one tail all cut up, a couple of horns. I picked up three lobsters today, so there's six horns. Um, but only cooking one tail. Uh, I'm saving the other, the other two for when Elizabeth comes home. We'll do a little champagne and lobster because she's bougie. And we haven't put in the cayenne pepper yet, but we will. And we're also going to finish it with a little bit more garlic at the end. So, you know what? I think it's time. Yeah, I think it's time. So let's just make it happen. So in it goes. How awesome is that? Get it all. Just kind of stir it in there make sure it gets in there good. Turn up the heat a little bit now. So this is gonna give off a little bit of liquid as well, and that's where all the flavor comes from, from the actual lobster liquid itself. A little bit more parsley. Again, just personal taste, but I just love parsley with my seafood. And of course, the last and final magic ingredient, more garlic. And more wine. No, 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 wine's for me. All right, turn up the heat a little bit so it, uh, so it comes to like a, another simmer. A couple minutes and we'll be able to plate this. Oh, one other thought. Look how nice and thick it is now. So part of it is when you're simmering the sauce to kind of leave the cover on a, on a slant so you don't get the whole place all messed up, but it also steams out a little bit. And you get to... Uh, to just kind of get that sauce nice and thick. All right, a couple of minutes. Oh my gosh, it smells so awesome. All right, one last thing before we actually let it go. I'm gonna put in a pretty generous amount of uh, cayenne pepper. Well, generous for me. Um, you may like it spicier. Here's the deal though, the cayenne gives it a real nice, again, a, another flavor that kind of melds with the sauce. And then later on at the end, if it's not enough spice or not enough heat, then I'll actually just take some of these uh, crushed red peppers and just put it on my, on my actual um, portion. So, yeah, there we go. So I'm just kind of mix that all in. All right, we're gonna let that cook down for a few minutes till that lobster cooks through. And then we'll be ready to make a plate. Oh, one other thing. We need to check our Brazi Bites. Yep, getting there. Nice and brown. A few more minutes for those as well. So there it is. So we probably simmered it for about another, oh, probably eight minutes or so. Just to kind of cook the lobster through. Not to get it overdone by any means. You don't want it to be tough. But it looks just perfect. And truth be known, kind of cheated a little bit. I actually took a little taste, so... Lobster is absolutely perfect. It's awesome. The time to get it into the plate. So here's our noodles. A little pasta. For some of our his Hispanic friends, 
would consider this sacrilege because we're not putting it over rice. But this is an Italian dish. And again, it's lobster fry diablo. The, uh, the Hispanic uh, version of the red sauce has more vegetables in it. Uh, it's got more peppers. And I think I'd like to try that as well. Uh, so I think we'll do a catch and cook with that on, probably on the next one. All right. There's still plenty in there, so probably a little bit more sauce. I want to be shy with the sauce. That looks awesome. So good. We got some grated Parmesan. The Brazi bites were done right on time. And we got some crushed red pepper. It's pretty easy to make. If you have any questions at all, we're more than happy to answer them for you. And like I said, you can make it out of any seafood at all. We've put fish in there at the end, uh, scallops, clams, uh, mixed up with, with shrimp, whatever seafood you have, mussels, and it always comes out just absolutely awesome. So, All right, well, there we are. Completely plated. Got some fresh uh, Parmesan cheese, a little bit of extra parsley, my brazi bite. A little glass of vino. A little cheese on there. My favorite is always the fresh Parmesan cheese. Of course, it's often not if it isn't scrumptious. It's amazing. Fresh lobster, pasta. Fantastic red sauce and a glass of wine. Bon appetit. Thanks a lot for watching. And I hope when you make this, that it comes out great as well.